Hi everybody, it's about the middle of May now and starting to do some prep ready for the river season that starts in about a month's time. And I thought what we'll do is I, I get asked on social media fairly regularly uh, about various setups and what I do in bits and pieces. So I thought perhaps as it was this time of year, prep time of year for the river season that I would um, go through certain aspects of my setup. So I'm going to do a little bit of a series of videos ranging from sort of my barbell fishing to my just standard perhaps chub roving, a terminal tackle through my luggage, uh, rods and reels etc. So for this first video um, I thought what we'll do is run you through my barbell rigs that I use, my barbell hook links. Before we get down and look at the desk uh, and we do a bit of bit of close-up rig tying, I'm going to tie some rigs today. Um, I, I use two main rigs for barbell. Um, one is a, a coated braid rig and I am aware that some places, and certainly one place I fish, uh, you're not allowed to use braid at all. So. I also do use fluorocarbon and especially if the, if the river is very clear um, I would, I would uh, favour a fluoro fluorocarbon rig. Now these rigs I tie up independently, I tie them at home uh, and I take them in a rig box, take them to the river and they'll fit on my rig system and the terminal tackle that I use at the river which I've got a system I use as well there which I'll run through in another video in, as part of this series. It's a very adjustable rig. Um, but these sort of fit into that system if you like. So it's probably enough waffling, we'll have a look down at the table and uh, we'll get tying some rigs. So this is the gear I typically use for my barbell rigs. I'll just run you through a few items. Now what I like to do, as you can probably see here, we'll start with the bait end, is I like to fix my boilies on. If I'm using boilies with a screw. I've been using these for many years and they've lasted me a very very long time but they are no longer around so I'm switching over to various other makes which I'm trying out this year some Nash ones and some Corder ones. You'll see a lot of this stuff is Corder um, stuff. Uh, make no apologies for that in my opinion they make the best stuff, the best uh, terminal tackle um, which is why I use cordy gear as much as possible. Now for my coated braid rigs, clearly we don't need the IQ. However, we will use the rest of the gear here or some of it certainly, obviously we'll choose one of those to use. We'll probably stick with using my Tasker ones, the few I've got left here. Um, hooks, I use cordy curve shank hooks for my barbell fishing, size six and eight. Uh, I will go smaller if I'm going on maggots or uh, such things or even worms but for my boilie fishing which um, these hook links will be for uh, I'm going to use uh, a size 6. I do use 8s as I say sometimes but we'll put those to one side for now. We'll do this based on a 6. As I say I do go smaller. I will use smaller hooks down to a 12. That's the smallest they do. It is a very big 12 based on other hook sizes. But uh, I will go down to a 12 when I'm using uh, maggots, but I'll tie it up in exactly the same way. I do uh, favour end trap as well, although I have started using this. I couldn't get some end trap last time I was buying a replacement, so I've tried some this corded camo as well, and that's that's decent stuff as well. But we'll tie this from the end trap. So what I'm going to do is pull off a length of this. Uh, I've gone off shot there, but I'm going to pull off. I would say that is about two foot, two and a half foot, something along those lines. And we'll, uh, we'll snip that off there. My lovely pair of nail scissors I use for my home tied hook links. Now what I like to do is strip this braid off. I don't have any strippers, but uh, I just, as you can see, tend to use my thumbnail. It does a decent job. Now what I strip off is a couple of inches, something like that. I'll we'll strip off a little bit more. There we go. We'll strip off a couple of inches there to give a nice flexible section next to the hook. I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes, but as with lots of things in fishing, if it gives you confidence, do it. So we'll take our hook out. We'll tie this on with a knotless knot. So 
I'll just leave a little tag through that. I usually go about six or seven times around here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whipping up the knot, at the hook, I should say, of course. There we are, and then back through. Always come back through, obviously, towards the point. Gives us our knotless knot with our supple section. The next thing to do is take your D-rig kicker, my last one. I do use medium or large uh, for a size six. They both work equally well. But you want it that way up. There's a sort of pre-drilled, pre-formed little hole in the top there. You want to get it on that way around like that. Push that on around the shank till you get roughly opposite the barb. These are micro barb. I do use barbless as well. Then what you need is your tasket bait screw which I'm fast running out of. I find it easier to put these on this way. I say easier. It's not actually easy. <coughs> A bit fiddly to get through. But you can get them through this way. There we go. Here's a flexi ring there. And thread our hook link through the back. It's just a case of carefully. You're going to see, don't stab yourself. <laughs> this is a very fiddly part of the operation. To do without, as I say, without stabbing yourself. There we are. That. That's just slipped off. Let's put it back on. There we go, that's better. And that's our D rig kicker sorted out. Absolutely love that flexibility there, the flexibility that that O ring gives to the bait. And I shall screw a boilie onto there. I use a long bait screw because I do occasionally like to screw a boilie on butterfly style so I'll cut the boilie in half and mount it the curved sides together on there and fill the middle up with paste but that is the business end <coughs> coming to the other end simply a case tying a reasonably long figure of eight loop make a loop in it twist it once push that through Tease that down so we get it as long as we can with the material we've got. There we go. Worth moistening your knots as well, guys. I haven't this occasion, but uh, always give them a moisten and always use sharp scissors as well. There we go. <laughs> so that is my finished rig. For barbel when I'm using boilies. Now let's put that to one side. <coughs> if I'm going to you say lunch of meat or a big lobworm, then same again. Two foot, two and a half foot of hook link material. Strip it off. There we go. Right. So again, if I'm using a bit of luncheon meat. Let's tie just in case of tying not this knot again. Of 
four, five, six. Now the flexible section, a bit less important if you're gonna shove it in a lump of lunch for me. But I do like to just still have that little bit of movement there. As I say, I'm not sure. There's a, lots of debate on whether that makes a lot of difference, but it does to me. Now what you're gonna need on this one is a kicker. Basically the same as the D-rig kickers. But without the D part, because obviously we're not going to be screwing a, a boilie onto these. There we are. Pass that through that. Make sure you get it on the right way around. Fat end first. There we are. We have a lovely aggressive hook there. Hooking angle. I'm sure that's what makes the fish not come off. And it's as simple as that. In case of tying another. long overhand loop or figure of eight loop I should say tease that down again wait your knots guys I do like a long loop because it acts as a bit of an anti-tangle boom as you can see I'm not putting anti-tangle sleeves on here all will become obvious when I do the video of my terminal tackle. There we are. That is our rig for when we're not using a boilie. Clearly I can use this for any size hook on there that I wanted. Right. The third rig that I use is a fluorocarbon rig. This is a, um, I use this IQ. I do like this IQ. It's quite stiff. I do like and then again there's debate again rages on the internet about whether barbel spook off fluorocarbon I've heard stories of you know people saying barbel spook off fluorocarbon but there's a braid ban on on your waters like there is on one of my waters and you have no choice so again Two and a half foot, 60, 70 centimeters. May seem a little bit short, but as I say, if you come to the next video, you'll see why I do this. Now, once again, take our hook. Now, I'm not gonna to explain to you how to tie a D-rig on here because there's many other videos on the internet explaining how to tie a D-rig because you don't you can you certainly use a D-rig kicker on here no problem at all but you can also tie it using the fluorocarbon because it's stiff enough and you end up with that sort of effect as I say I'm not going to tie this now because there's lots and lots of other good videos showing you that but you end up with that but what I would do with this again was I using it for lunch and meat or worms it's just a simple case of not less not nicely bedded down like that excuse me being a bit fingers and thumbs guys but I have the camera sitting exactly in the way <laughs> as you can imagine so there we go and you can see with fluorocarbon I'll just turn that tag off the back there with fluorocarbon you end up with that lovely especially this you can see how stiff that is you end up with that lovely aggressive hooking angle which works a treat and once again let's take that beginning of a new spool of this take that funny end bit off again reasonably long sort of two inch long Make that loop, twist it over, push through, tease that down. Once again, wet your knots, trim off the tag end. There we go, there we have our fluorocarbon barbel hook link. 
So I hope that explains why I use the barbell hook links that I use. Um, now this video should really be viewed in conjunction with the um, barbell terminal tackle video, my running ledger setup, which will be part of this series as well. But I hope that explains why I use things and my thinking through the process and it's been very successful with me. And I have to say, when I hook barbell on those barbell hook links, they don't come off. <laughs> if I hook a fish, it's in the net. And I, I cannot remember losing a fish on those hook links. Certainly works for me anyway. So as all there is left to do is to say thank you very much for watching. Hope that was informative and helps you with your fishing. Tight lines when you get out. Really, really looking forward to the 16th of June. Many thanks to the channel patrons and I'll see you all again very soon.